Hello friends. Today I want to talk about converting a uh, compact point-and-shoot camera to be a uh, an infrared camera. Notice right here I have attached this which is a uh, a hacked up uh, filter holder and I have what looks like a opaque piece of glass here but it's actually a infrared filter and what I've done is uh, this camera it's a Lumix ZS3 so it's an older point-and-shoot camera uh, I've converted it to be a full-spectrum camera so what full spectrum means is that uh, inside modern digital cameras there is a filter inside the camera that prevents everything but normal visible light from getting to the uh, sensor. Okay, so that means that there's no or very little ultraviolet or infrared light that makes it to the sensor. Anyway, the goal, though, was to make this into an infrared camera. Now, one thing about the this type of point-and-shoot camera is that you cannot just attach a filter to the front of the uh, of the camera, and there's no accessory that allows you to attach a normal filter. You know. So what I did was to come up with a method for attaching a filter mount. Now normally if we go zoom in close, normally there's a, a silverish uh, thing on the front here and there's also a normally a, uh, a lens shutter but notice there is none and that's because I removed the shutter and then right here is the piece of metal that's normally right here. What I did was remove that piece of metal from here and then use an ultra strong glue to attach this to this filter holder. And the filter holder, uh, the filter holder was something I found on eBay that is designed to go for this kind of camera, but it came with a piece of double-sided sticky tape. And the double-sided sticky tape just did not last. It was very cool to have this filter holder on the front, but it just fell off. Okay, so what I've decided to do was to get this strong epoxy and then glue this on. And it's turning out to be fairly uh, secure. Okay, so what I want to do next is talk more about the full process. So if we back up, I said this is a full spectrum camera. It's not built that way. It's not designed to be a full spectrum camera. It's designed to be a normal fun, uh, point and shoot camera. So what I did, you see that it's a normally functioning camera. Uh, so what I did is uh, there are screws here and also on each side. 
So if you unscrew those screws, then you can take the back off. And I've written a blog post about this, and I'll make a link to the blog post. But uh, basically, you can take this back off. It's very easy. And then there's a couple of parts to remove, such as the display unit. And, and then you have the back of the lens available to you. And on the back of the lens, there is a, a, a sensor that is the image sensor. And you unscrew a couple uh, screws on the image sensor, and then the filter is right inside there. It's a little piece of glass. So you take out the filter, you put the sensor back on, and you put the camera back together. It's fairly easy, especially with these Lumix cameras. They're, these Lumix cameras are very easy to get into and to modify. Once you've got that filter removed and you've got the camera back together, it is a full spectrum camera, which then leaves you with the problem of attaching a filter to the front of the lens. So this is with the filter detached. You see it says IR720. And it also says 49 millimeter. 49 millimeter is the diameter. The 720 refers to the wavelengths that it blocks. So 720 is the beginning of infrared light and there is no visible light that will come through this filter. The advantage to this setup is I can get a number of filters of this size and then just attach them to this. So I found, eventually decided to get this epoxy glue uh, uh, called Gorilla Weld. And it's similar to JB Weld, but it's Gorilla Weld instead. Uh, and it, I haven't done extreme testing on it, but it seems to be working good. Okay, so when you put it on, what I did was to spread uh, the Gorilla Glue on the front of the this part, and then attach this to the front of that. Now, you, you have to be careful about centering, but otherwise it's very simple. One thing that happened, though, I didn't do a very good job of centering this, and there was a couple of gaps right here. And so I made another glob of the glue to fill in the gaps. Because you don't want extraneous light coming in. So as it stands, the filter ad adapter fits on the front of the camera. And as you can see, right now it's not glued in place. And the filter adapter just kind of rotates. So the idea is to rotate it to where it correctly fits in front of the lens and also doesn't block any of the lens. And I believe this is the best rotation because it doesn't block any of the lens. Okay, now the question is, or the thing to observe is that the, with this as it is, the filter is not going to stay on securely. And it's best if this filter does stay on securely. So what I'll do is glue on this to the front of the lens, again using Gorilla Glue. Alright, so this is my workspace for uh, setting up some glue to put on this, to put onto the camera. Okay, so this is the Gorilla Glue. So this is a two-part epoxy glue. So there's a resin and a hardener. And the instructions are to pour an equal amount of both onto a work surface. And it's best if it's a work surface that you can do whatever you want. This is, this is just an old piece of wood that I use for various things. And this is the leftover from the resin that I used previously. And then you need a stick. This is just part of a Q-tip. So my plan is to only put glue on the flat part here, not on the sides. Just the flat part. Okay, so 
here is the material that I poured out. You should be warned that there is a chemically smell to this. It's probably got a certain amount of toxicity. Uh, so it should be done in a ventilated area. Unfortunately, this is not a ventilated area. The idea is you simply mix it together until uh, the color evens out. Which, that's about right. Okay, so I have the epoxy. Now there, uh, another thing to keep be aware of is that there is a three minute working time. So once you've mixed it over here, you have three minutes to get it onto the thing and the pieces together. So my clock is ticking. So now I have to, okay, I decided this way was the right way. And I extended the lens so that I can more easily get here. looks good. So what I've been doing is just kind of verifying for myself that it looks like it's the right way around and that it's the centered correctly and kind of pressing it into place. Uh, I wanted to make sure there's no vignetting in the image and it looks like there isn't any so I'm gonna call this a success so far the next step is the instructions say to clamp the pieces together so I don't feel comfortable with using an actual clamp uh, like this on my camera. So what I'm going to do is just set a little weight on top of it. I'll just set it aside and put a weight on it. And then tomorrow I will finish this up and show uh, the result. Hello friends. It's the next day and the project is finished. I put everything together and I wanted to demonstrate how it works. And also, I'm outdoors where there's lots of infrared light, so I can do a little demonstration of infrared. Okay, so this shows the lens with the lens cap, and the filter is over here. You, know, you can see I can pick up the camera using the lens filter ring thing, and it's holding in place. And then I can turn the camera on, and the lens extends, and you know, if I try to turn the lens filter holder, it's not turning. If I pull on it a little bit, it's not coming off. So, you know, without extent, it, testing it too extensively, it is holding the lens as long as this is staying securely on the front of the lens, then this is successful. And so this is, again, a strong epoxy glue, specifically Gorilla Weld, and it's holding it on. So, let's do a quick little demonstration of infrared. This is the scene that we're looking at, a normal street, all kinds of green vegetables, etc. But then, this is with the camera without the infrared filter on, and you'll see that all the plants look a little bit purpley. Okay, and that's because this is in full spectrum mode. So now, I've put the infrared filter back on the front of the camera and you see that the scene has changed to where it is fully purpley. It's a lot different now. And the plant material is showing up in 
various colors. So to get a proper infrared picture out of this, we'll have to take, you know, we can take the picture, but then we'll have to go into uh, Photoshop or something, you know, GIMP rather, and uh, do some manipulations to make it look like a nice picture. But uh, okay, so this is success. success. What we've what we've uh, achieved is on the front of a normal point-and-shoot camera. The cut filter is what it's called inside the camera has been removed to make it a full spectrum camera. And even though there's no uh, way to mount a fil uh, filter on the front of the lens, we've used high strength epoxy glue to uh, attach a filter holder and now we can attach filters.